All right, everyone, welcome to our May 28th Outreach and Network Meeting. Thank you all for being here. I see some familiar faces in the crowd. I'm sorry, I'm in a goofy mood. Um, I will uh, start by leading us in a grounding exercise and land acknowledgement, as we often do. So I invite you to feel your feet on the floor, notice the weight of your body on the seat. Notice the sensation of the seat rising up to meet your body. Notice how the seat is supported by the floor of the room that you're in, which is supported by the foundation of the building, which is also supported by the hand. I invite you to notice your breath moving in and out of your body. Carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide with the environment around you. It's a relationship that is always happening for as long as we are alive on this planet. And I invite you to zoom out a bit in your mind's eye and notice your body, the room that you're in and the building that you're in. And notice where you are in the larger landscape, the larger environment. You might start to notice some familiar landmarks, the area where you live, might be trees, rocks, animals, buildings, people. And I invite you to view the landscape just going backwards in time. See if you can imagine in your mind's eye maybe some of the original stewards of the land where you live. See if you can feel into their presence and all the ways that they lived in close, ongoing relationship with the land, with all of the relations on the land. I invite you to move forward through time. if you can imagine some different things happening on the land where you live, movements of people and animals, changes in weather patterns, as well as things like wars, colonization, any major changes that happened in the places where we lived over the last few hundred years. Keeping in mind how that all changed the landscape as well. And I invite you to bring your attention back to the present day and locating yourself on the land and feeling into your relationship with your relations on the land, and all the ways that you might tend to the land and give and receive from the land. I invite you to cultivate some gratitude and acknowledgement in your heart for the histories of these lands where we live, the known histories and the unknown histories, as well as gratitude to the original stewards of the land where we live. And you might also hold an intention to move towards right relationship with those stewards, with the indigenous peoples who are still present today, as well as the relationship with the land themselves.
ready, I invite you to open your eyes, join us back in the circle. Maybe reorient yourself a little bit to the room where you are now. And our check-in question for today is an oldie and a goodie. What is your internal weather like today? Mm. And the circle as I see it, it is Roland, Ben, and me. Over to you, Roland. Uh, pretty placid. Uh, over to Ben. Well, the outside weather is a bit dreary and um, uh, what is my inner look? And the inner weather is, um, yeah, actually it's similar, but not dreary, but it's it's uh, a anticipatory. Um, over to you, Ronnie. My internal weather is cloudy and sleepy and drizzly. Awesome. So now that we have checked in and grounded ourselves, I will share the screen so that we can see our agenda for today. And oh, there's the button right from me, right on top. Can you see our meeting agenda? Yep. So to start off, we have some we had some action items from the last meeting. Um, what making some changes to the website based on our feedback. Um, we have yet to get started on that, but that's on my to do list. Um, we have talking to finance and legal about feedback on language and investing on the website. We have a question to Heartwork and Philosophy about the Connect the Dots Club and maybe potential connection to map magazine curation. And we also had a task to simplify the calendar events now that we no longer have the webinars happening. Um, and then there was a task to send out meeting notes from the last weekend or the last meeting, which I did. Um, a couple of updates are, I sent out our newsletter yet uh, this morning, and I also sent out uh, the email invite to the six conversations theory. And um, are there any other updates besides what I've shared? Over to you, Ron. I was just wondering, we don't actually in, uh, neither the uh, hard work nor an outreach uh, Guild, do we have a space for the six conversation, um, I don't know, task force working group uh, to, to, to report? And uh, uh, I feel that at this point that it's probably more the Outreach Guild that that's sort of doing the six conversations. So I would, I have a suggestion since we've got two of the three members um, here today, that that the outreach guild would be a good place for the um, for that group to report on activities. And otherwise, I don't think I really have anything else to add. So over to Ben. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good. I think that's a good addition, and I don't think I have anything else to add. Back to you, Ronnie. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And um, next meeting, yeah, we could say next outreach meeting, that will be part of the, the updates that we share. Um, cool. So um, possible topics on docket our um, seasonal review. So we've done our broader uh, coordination circle seasonal review. We haven't done a specific outreach seasonal review. I'm not really sure why this is checked off. Uh, I may have mistakenly done that. Um, I don't, I honestly I don't. It. Oh, you did it, okay. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't think it will take that long. Um, but you know, famous last words. Um, 
we also have a task, potential task to clarify the goal of this, or the, sorry, the role of this guild in publicizing events for other guilds, um, following up on the network com network connections conversation, and then managing social media in general. Um, are there any other topics that anybody would like to add or change? In terms of the website changes, my plan is to go through and see what I can figure out, what I can do on my own, and then uh, what need what I need extra help and or just send to David. So I think that that, yeah, I'll take a first pass and then make a list of things and then we can check back in about it. If that works for everybody. Um, the, the only thing I would add on that is, and this is um, a, a a possibility if it's helpful, is to add subtasks for the, the specific items, just because it might be easier to share them out. Um, but um, that's not what your, your plan sounds like a good plan. So um, in terms of priorities, uh, I would propose that we talk about the rest of the seasonal review stuff first to just get that done. And then um, I'm not sure which topic to talk about after that, but maybe we could do the seasonal review and then and then see how much time we have um, and what, what seems like a good next step. Does that sound good to people? Over to you, Robert. Yep. Then. Yep. Sounds good to me. Okay. So, are the are there subtasks for these in this task? There are two um, independent tasks. Okay. So process slash guild meeting efficiency. What's the best use of time in guild meetings? Best planning structure? How do we deal with between meeting communications? And how can we feel like we're making progress? Um, so we can take the start with the first question. What's the best use of time? And what is the best standing structure? Um, any considerations that you have? Over to you. Uh, I was wondering about um, having uh, uh, agreeing on a certain amount of time for the welcome and opening. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I guess my concern is as a recording, um, uh, if the welcoming is very long that it and it doesn't get to the to the, the topic that um, people get board um so that's uh one consideration over to ben yeah i think that's my big mine as well um and it's a balance thing you know how much time it's also if we're trying to keep meetings to an hour you know how much time is it reasonable to spend in the opening and welcome and um and what needs to get covered um and I think it's feeling into it. I think it's worthwhile to have it there. I, I think that the spirit of giving everyone a chance to actually kind of check in is a really good one. I think that's a good process. Um, and it's just a question of how to do it. What What's a, a reasonable amount of time to do it? Um, over to you, Ronnie. Wondering about just starting the recording at the check-in question. Um, I don't know. Rushing through the grounding doesn't feel generative to me. Like it feels weird. Like, I don't know. Um, it's also something that every time I lead it, it's a little bit different. And to try and keep it to a certain number of minutes feels difficult. I also have no idea how long it takes because I haven't timed it, so. Um, but in terms of the, the recording itself, things could just be cut out. 
but if we don't want to cut it, yeah, it's just, to me, this isn't an issue, but I'm also not somebody watching the recordings. So, um, yeah, over to you, Roland. And I think that that's actually putting the finger on it. It's we're participating versus viewing. You know, we're not viewing it, we're participating. So the the experience is different. And I think it depends on how invitational we want it to be. Um, I guess my concern is that with very long um, openings that it... Uh, uh, it doesn't feel, uh, and, and that could actually be something. So one option other than apart from cutting it out is actually making it invitational to, to people who are viewing that they could be invited in to, cause it's not explicit. Um, and I think, I think also one of the possibilities is that we could start after the check-in, like you were suggesting. Um, so we could. And I think it's it might also be um, a useful exercise to be mindful of how long it takes. That's a suggestion. Um, so uh, I think it's good to have the opening and grounding. Uh, I think that um, an, a land acknowledgement would be better recorded than cut out. Um, and I, there, and I can also see that there's all sorts of different ways in which this could happen. And uh, uh, so those are further comments on this one topic. And um, I don't know that I have, oh, I guess another topic apart from the, uh, the opening is um, uh, the usefulness of having the, the chapters that you can click on and um the format for that are they're just sort of like standard sections we have the we have the welcome the check-in the um agenda setting and the discussion or do we want it to be more fluid and, and uh granular uh, over to ben so coming back to the opening um, I, I just, I want to say that I ditto Ronnie's thing about when you're leading it, if you're doing it spontaneously, then it's really hard to get a sense of it, of how long it's taking. Um, that's definitely my experience is I just kind of, you know, go in, go into it and come out <laughs> at, at the other side. And, um, and I will say as a participant, I don't think this is only a video issue. Um, I think it's also true for participants, especially people who might be starting, might be joining. Um, you know, and, and especially if we are trying to keep the meetings to a tight timeline, you know, there's just, it doesn't make any sense to spend 20 minutes on the intro and welcome and, you know, less time actually um, doing stuff. Um, and I, yeah, and I mean, I really feel like this is just going to be one of those kind of experimenting with it and feeling like, um, you know, I would welcome mini experiments to see different ways that we could do it. Um, I know in some of the other guilds, uh, the guild goes over the mission and the purpose of the guild and the, the agreements. Um, I think that's another question about how useful that is every time. Um, it is useful, and it's a question of how much time to spend to it. Um, in terms of the chapters, I think the chapters are great, and um, what and I uh, recognizing the balance in terms of how much time it takes to set them up. Uh, my feeling would be welcome, land acknowledgement, and check in and agenda setting first chunk. Intro, it's like in my mind that's all intro and so you're probably not interested in you know most of that if you're just looking to see what the discussions are and then I think for the discussion whatever the agenda items are for each of the agenda items and then that also gives a sense of if you're looking at the video after the fact what what were the discussions oh like you can just see first topic 
and how the time and you can just click right on what you are interested in. But I love that you're doing it. I mean, I really think that's a um, that's a real value. Um, yeah, and and otherwise, actually, I feel like the meetings are going pretty well. I know that there's, um, I, I feel like there's some getting used to circle process and the kind of more emergent way that we do meetings for people who aren't used to it. Um, but I really feel like we get a lot done in a short amount of time. So in general, I feel like our 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 use of time is really good. So um, that's you know one perspective. Over to you, Ronnie. Yeah, I agree. Um, I also really like the the chapters and the proposal that you laid out, Ben, for each of them. Um, I love the mini experiments idea. Um, I think there's a time and place for a shorter acknowledgement and grounding, and then there are other times where we can like let it be longer and more sort of flowy and imaginal. So I I like that idea. Um. I think going over the purpose of the guild and agreements is useful. And I'm wondering if at least seasonally having that mm -hmm. be part of the meeting um, and maybe once a month and there's two, there, there's, but there's two meetings a month. So I don't know, but it is an interesting kind of like the high level when we do the high level for the lifeboat Academy, what's the high level for the guild. Um, And I think I think that is important to do seasonally and also and also especially anytime a new person um comes to the guild, putting that out there, universe, mm -hmm. <laughs> and new people coming in, um having, you know, orienting them um in the group setting, I think is also a really nice welcoming, sort of making someone feel included and acknowledged for their presence. Um But yeah, overall, I feel like I agree. I think we get a lot done. And I've been in my head comparing our meetings to meetings that I've had in other organizations. And it's like, honestly, it's like no comparison. <laughs> it's really, yeah, it's really, really interesting. Um, but yeah, so, um, so what I'm taking away from this is, um, playing with it a bit in terms of the opening, seeing how long things take, different things that we try out. Um, also trying out, going over the, the high level guild stuff um, once in a while and see how that feels. Um, is there anything anything else anyone wants to say about this section? Over to you, Roland. Yes. Um, I agree that um, we've got uh, a certain amount of time that we want to spend in the meeting. So figuring out how to use that time. And um, I also wanted to suggest that we have an opening and um, uh, it may also be useful to have a kind of closing. Uh, what would be a good way to close the meeting? You know, we kind of go by and uh and then you know the the screens all sort of flash out as people sign out um so um and and keeping in mind that we want to be respectful of people's time is there some form of closing that could be that could be satisfying uh i also wanted to talk about and say in terms of check-in the kind of check-in that i find really useful for these kinds of meetings um, are things like what are you hoping to get out of the meeting? Mm -hmm. Because it, it it sort of is an organic way I feel of going into what the uh, agenda items, um, and and I see the more imaginal check ins being more fitting for um, like the the navigation sessions and where we're wanting to go uh, deep into 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 our experience kind of thing. So um, over to Ben. Yeah, I think that's a great point on the closing. Um, you know, and just like, what are you hoping to get out of it? A, a classic closing is, what are you taking away, you know, or um, 
something really simple um, or any last thoughts for the good of the cause of just giving everyone uh, a chance to to wrap up. Um, I think that's a great idea. I think that the the the, um, the high level purpose also feels like something that could be done really quick. And I just I just took a look at our YouTube channel. We don't have huge numbers, but all of our meetings get multiple views. So, um, you know, in some there's 20 or, or so people that are looking at the videos after we do them. So it, that's I think that's important to keep in mind that um, the, those of us who are in the meeting may know the purpose. That doesn't mean people watching the video are going to remember. So and I, I agree that that could be done really quick. Um, yeah, yeah. And I could imagine like two rounds of the introduction. One is kind of a check in how you doing round that can, you know, give people a chance to come into the space to leave behind whatever, you know, is not serving. And, um, and then how do you want to use this time? Sort of like zoom, zoom. And, um, and then a closing. Anyhow, I, I feel like um, this is, this has been a really uh, productive, <laughs> speaking of efficiency, I feel like there's a lot of really good ideas in here. And it's just a question of kind of uh, playing with them, um, I feel. So um, back to you, Ronnie. Agreed. And I'm also like, who are these people watching our videos? Where are they? Show yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just really curious. I mean, I know we, I know some of our regulars, but it seems like there might be some other regulars too that I, I'm not aware of. So yeah, just really would like to know. Um, cool. Well, that all sounds good to me. Um, and our next question is how do we deal with between meeting communications. Over to you, Roland. Um, generally, I find that the three of us are really good at in-between communications. Um, it is um, encouraging the larger guild group to uh, communicate in between meetings. And like I was saying in the coordination meeting, this is completely in uh, uh, recognition and respecting that um, we have our lives and everybody else has theirs. So everyone everyone does what they can within their own context. But so so what that relationship is between um, everybody's individual life and encouraging and getting more interaction in between meetings is, I think, the way that I'm understanding the challenge here. And it sort of ties in with Ronnie, you were just talking about who are these people who are watching the videos. Um, and I would invite those people who are watching the video to let us know what are ways in which we can invite interaction. You know, I am personally, I am interested in hearing what the what people who view the videos what their opinion is, if they have ideas, if they have something that they want to contribute or want to pass on, you know, um, those are all things that that I'm I would be happy for, with the caveat that this becomes part of the discussion and not necessarily the uh, the, you know, if you give a suggestion and we might not go through with this suggestion, that's all up to the wisdom of the circle to 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 decide but i i do want i do want to hear from people i do want to have interaction and i don't know how to do that uh, so actually if anyone is watching this and knows how to do that or has ideas on how to do that that would be great uh over to ben yeah ditto i i just i wish i knew how even if we knew the people who were interested curious how um because there's all sorts of ways in which i think we could invite light feedback and you know where it isn't we don't need people to do do a lot 
but just, you know, if we're talking about we could do A or we could do B, do people have an opinion, A or B? And, um, or, um, well, actually, the uh, Connect the Dots Club, I think, is a great example. The One of the things that we've identified is we want to start a conversation. What are your favorite materials? What's your favorite book? What's your favorite article um, relevant to, you know, if um, what do you think people need to know who are about to start building a lifeboat? What's the most useful? And that could be, that's just such a simple question you know, what's your favorite book? And boom, 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 you type it and you're done. Um, where do we put that question that people will see it? And and how do we, so this is kind of, I guess, linked to the social media management in general, but, you know, um, are people more likely to see it as an email? Are they more likely to see it on Facebook or on Instagram? Do we have to have a meme? Does it have to have a picture? You know, like um, just some of those basics of, um, and and actually, you know, if I could have access to the mind of God, how many people are sitting back, fly on the wall, and have thoughts but just don't share them? And um, yeah, I don't I don't know how do you answer those questions because we don't know how to. And, and we've and I will say the other thing I'm going to say is we have tried lots, right? we we are on multiple social media platforms we we have consistent memes going out we have we put questions out we have email that goes out we have interactive uh, we've got you know we've got so many ways that people can get engaged and um and it's it's not working in one sense you know it's not bringing in the kind of feedback that i was hoping for so what do we need to do what can we let go of and um, and what can we change? So this is just one of those, I think it's a perpetual head scratcher for me. Over to you, Ronnie. Yeah, I feel like we're already going into the engagement piece, um, which is great, like wisdom of the circle. And I'm happy to, I, I think this is really useful. Um, one thing I'm thinking about is you know, we, we talk about our audience, you know, um, climate alarmed and collapse aware. And we know about the, the scientific research on these populations of people, you know, over 30% of people in the U.S. identify that way, blah, blah, blah. But I'm wondering about even like putting out a little poll on Instagram and being like, are you are you concerned about climate? Or because because they're following us, they probably already are, but what are some other interesting questions that we could ask? These quick little relational tools that are built into the platform, um, or you can ask a question and then people respond via private message with their answer, and then we could share those out. We could publish the answers anonymously so that people can see people's answers. We could also review the answers um, in our meetings, just like, five minute segment of, we asked this question this week and here's some of the answers we got. It was really cool, you know? And I think this is a kind of thing we haven't tried as much. We've asked questions on the Facebook group, but Instagram is, is just a different vibe for people. And I think if they can shoot off a quick little answer to something, they will. I know I've done that. So um, I just wanna make that quick. Um, but yeah, trying, trying new things that are, you know, fairly low effort, um, low risk, but could be really interesting and get people more, especially I'm thinking about younger people, getting them more engaged. I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds a lot like me. I'm really curious what these people are offering. Um, I had something else, but I think it's gone out of my mind. Um, over to you, Roland. Yeah, I think that the, the uh, this is, I agree, this is a good, dis a good um, discussion. And I think I'm the one who started to get it to go off track. 
And I just wanted to check in around the original question, which is how do we deal with in-between yeah. meeting communications? Um, and then and then I would suggest that we can then, then come back to, to the broader engagement issue. Um, uh, oh yeah, so I was going to talk about engagement again, but I'll make a note about what I wanted to talk about in terms <laughs> of engagement to talk about that later. Uh, so I will, while I'm writing that note, I will pass over to Ben. <laughs> I want to start doing the same thing. I think it's important that we stay focused on our main topic, but on other news, I'd like to start this. <laughs> um, I love the idea of the poll and um, at, or polls and um, and I, I, and, but I think that I don't think that you're getting us off track, Roland. I think that it's just the the web of connections, um, because you know the the fundamental issue that we have right now in the guilds is that we just don't have a we don't have a critical mass, and um, I think those people who are engaged respond appropriately when we send out an email. If you're if it's guild work in between the meetings and people are coming to the meetings, it's really easy to say, we'll send out an email, can everyone agree to respond? And everyone goes, yes, and you're you you know, and you're done. Um, or we're gonna continue this conversation on Slack or whatever. Um, but it's it's the kind of the deeper engagement, like how do we get the, the numbers coming and committing? So in some sense, I think really the in-between meeting communication has more to do it has, yeah, it has more to do actually with engagement than technology. And, um, but I love the poll question and um, I have lots of, of questions that, that I think would be interesting to throw out in those, you know, uh, quick, quick, you know, little, you know, um, do, like, for example, even people that are, are climate aware and are climate alarmed and collapse aware um what's their take on collapse you know like there's a couple is it do you think it's now soon or later you know is just sort of a an interesting or you know there's all sorts of fun ways that we can kind of um, break up those questions into provocative little um, polls so i think that's great and um Oh, and actually, that's the other thing, too. And I, I wonder also about weaving in. Uh, let me start. Uh, I think that if we do polls the right way and we get people curious about, you know, answering those, then it makes it a lot easier to start building an ongoing conversation to follow up on, them. you know, then people want to talk about the results of the poll. So you know, you, you get some engagement with people answering the poll and then you get more engagement. Isn't that curious that, you know, half of the people said this or that no one said that, and, you know. Um, anyhow, I, I do feel like we're we're veering from one to the other, but I feel like in the end, it's it's all, all moving in the right direction. So over to you, Ronnie. You're muted. I have more to say about engagement. Should I just keep going? I'm kind of not sure. You're the you're the caretaker. You're the caretaker. I'm care the care boss. <laughs> yeah. You're reading, the as as Jim says, you're the head of the circle. Because I didn't want the communicating thing to get lost, but uh, uh, I'm I was just a suggestion. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go over here because this is what we're talking about. Um. Uh, one of the things I'm kind of more taking a, a high level view of engagement, specifically thinking about engagement in the guilds is I think, um, I think people need to, they need to have their own understanding of why this work is important and what we're trying to do. And the way to do that is by participating in something that we do and have having that positive experience of like, oh yeah, this is really different. This is really useful. These tools are really amazing. I want to help support 
the growth of this. Um, because that was definitely, that was my experience coming in and learning about sociocracy, doing navigating the attentions, doing circle process. I was like, yeah, this works really well. And I really believe in this. Um, so I kind of see it as twofold. Like people who are engaged in the guilds are also going to, they, my hope is that they all are also lifeboat builders and they want, they want to use the, they want to use the tools for themselves and they want, and they want to give back. They want to give to this organization to help it be more, um, more powerful, more, what's the word, have more reach. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think, so I, and I feel like we're on the right track with the six conversations and the Connect the Dots Club, these very specific offerings where we're, we're giving something really useful, we're providing an opportunity for people to have an experience and then at the end, it's really saying, it was, what do we do with that? Like they go through the six weeks and they have this experience and then how do we keep them engaged? And that's kind of the question for all of these different ways that we um, engage people is like, okay, so where do we take it next? I don't want someone to just engage and then we're like, thanks for the feedback. And then we're done. It's like, no, it's like, thank you for the feedback. Um, have you heard about navigation sessions? Or I think you'd really like uh, a lifeboat circle. So, and not, and it's, it's not like we're selling anything. Like we, we don't even ask for money. <laughs> it's like, we're offering something that's really cool. And that's such a, that's a gift, you know, mm -hmm. we're offering something really valuable. So anyway, that's the end of my ramble over to Roland. I have several things to say. Um, one of them is that we're talking about engagement and correct me if I'm wrong, which you will. It, did April said that she wanted to uh, work on engagement to apply the work that she does on engagement to the Lifeboat Academy. So where does this conversation, is that is did, did I misunderstand that? And if I did not, then where does this conversation fit in with the work that April, that I think April has indicated that she was interested in doing for the Lifeboat Academy? So then that also becomes a question in terms of which, do we respect the guilds that April is in? Do we have a separate thing for April? Or like, what does that look like? Um, and the other thing is that we've talked about using polls in the Hardcore Guild meeting this, la the last one, um, around um, the Connect the Dots Club and uh, getting uh, interest and engagement in the getting uh, the uh, connect, uh, connect the Dots Club. And uh, so now my question is, that is an outreach thing to use social media to, to do polls and such. So does it make sense that, so a couple of questions here, does it make sense for the Outreach Guild to have kind of guidelines and how-tos for it? Or is it something that the Outreach Guild would do for other guilds? That's another thing. And the other, other thing, the other, other, other thing that I was, I wanted to say is that in the Connect the Dots Club uh, discussion, um, we were also talking about the Connect the Dots Club being the continuation to um, the uh, six conversations about lifeboats. So we were already talking about ways of continuing engagement and uh, and not I'm not suggesting that it would only be the Connect the Dots Club, but that we were we were talking about um, starting to introduce, or or that the um, uh, six conversations about lifeboats task force. I just want to use those that term uh, task force um, would talk about when to start introducing ideas 
uh, or other other things that can be done with the Lifeboat Academy, such as the Connect the Dots Club. I think I was just thinking in terms of Connect the Dots Club, but then Ronnie, when you're talking, it's uh, there's other things that can be offered. So are there ways of nesting all of those things as potential continued engagement opportunities for people through the six conversations about lifeboats? Over to Ben. So frequent reminders are a good thing, right? And we have that written down somewhere. So <clears throat> uh, the uh, six conversations about lifeboats task force group, Inc. Uh, uh, it needs an acronym. And um, anyhow, that is already built into the process for the six conversations, where at the end of the conversations, we link people with the navigation sessions, mentoring, and connect the dots club. So that's already there, already done. And um, likewise, there is a task on Asana, which is something like draft uh, brainstorming protocol. And what this is, and I took that on, but actually Ronnie, I think you and I should work on that together. Can you uh, say that again? Yeah, there's a task that is, um, draft brainstorming template or something like that. Um, because in the Connect the Dots Club, what Roland was saying is we recognized that we were introducing that what we wanted to do for the Connect the Dots Club would also be useful for other topics. And so we were trying to do it in the spirit of an experiment where what we, you know, we'll try things, but what we learn will save as a protocol that you know, could be applied to other things. Um, so um, that's already, it's already in the works that there's a task. And I think what we need to do is you and I, Ronnie, you and me to um, connect around that. Because I've got some ideas, but it sounds like you've got more ideas. In fact, I would be tempted to hand it over to you, but I also want to be part of thinking through how that works. And um, the... And I think the other point that I'm hearing isn't just that we go from six conversations to connect the dots, but there is something in there about presenting people with a challenge. And um, the and I, I think that we're not able to communicate um, the mutual benefit aspect of this, the like, we don't want you to stop working on your project. We want to help your project. You know, like when we say join the Lifeboat Academy, we're not saying drop what you're doing and become, do something else. We're saying we want to figure out how to support you with these tools that we find work well for us. And, um, and Ronnie, you said this at one of our recent meetings, and I think it, I think when we were talking about the the six conversations, it's it's actually at some point saying, what's your personal development plan? And and what I don't know what that's probably not the right language. Um I, you know, I think personal development plan kind of gets people thinking in the wrong direction. Um, but there is something about the coaching, the the mentoring. Like, what's your project and how can we help you in your project? And and we know some specific ways that we can help. And um, just a, as a as sort of a final step, I'm thinking about, just like Pamela was saying, being able to describe what something isn't is as helpful as describing what it is. I think being able to describe the kinds of challenges we think we can help people with you know, um, are you, are you feeling over, are you freaking out and feeling overwhelmed and not sure how to focus your energy? We can help with that. Are, is your group struggling to find some, some, uh, some center, some purpose, you know, or, or, you know, are, is your group fragmenting, uh, because of different ideas of how to proceed or, you know, those are, those are the kinds of things that, you know, are you having a hard time making sense of the world? Those are the things that we can help with. 
And, and I think then, you know, we can help you. And at the very same time, by them, by us helping them, we end up helping ourselves because of the mutual support aspect of it. You know, they don't need to promote us. They just need to share the tools that are, they think are useful to people they think are, it would be useful for. Um, anyhow, I feel like I'm, I'm, have taken up too much airtime. So um, back to you, Ronnie. I agree that the personal development plan language is, I don't know, but I, I've been thinking a lot about commitment lately and how this whole thing only works if people show up and ask questions and share their story and be vulnerable and be, and it's, but it's, it's really them showing up for themselves. Like that's, mm -hmm. yep. that's really what it is. And there are a lot of people who just aren't there yet for whatever reasons, but I would like for us to be able to make it as easy as possible for that to happen. Have you, have you been struggling to move project? I'm thinking about Andy, you know, have you been struggling to move these projects forward, even though you have plans written down, you have all of these ideas, you have all of these pieces and yet life keeps getting in the way. Um, what's up with that, you know, and, and, but something, I wonder if it would be useful to actually have people write a commitment. And this is also something I learned in my grief facilitator program. What are you a commitment to? Um, you know, I'm a commitment to building community resilience. I am a commitment to navigating conflict in healthy ways, you know, whatever it is, what are people? those commitments that they want to make for, to themselves and in the world. And then from there, we go into the mentoring and we identify the buckets and the like, specific goals that will lead them there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, really making people aware of like, this is for you. We're asking for you to commit to yourself first and foremost, and to us as part of that process. Um, and so finding those people who I'm just thinking, you know, how about working relationally, like who are the people I know in my life? Who I'm like, Oh, these, this person shows up. I see, I've seen this person show up for this thing. I'm curious if they want to build a lifeboat and if they're ready to show up for that, you know? So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, this is really great. Um, And there is something powerful to having someone actually sign a commitment to showing up for this series or this, not this one, but to, to something, some amount of time, some, some kind of activity that, that we're offering. Um, there's a power in that. It's like, oh yeah, I signed an agreement that I would show up. So, um, yes. I'm noticing time. We are a little bit beyond an hour. Um, is there anything else folks would like to share about engagement? Over to you, Roland. I would like uh, to suggest, uh, Ben, you were going through a whole bunch of short uh, phrases, uh, questions to ask people. Um, I would like I would like to suggest uh, building a little list of them and uh, actually setting them up as uh, as uh, memes mm -hmm. to go out with contact information to you know if these if these are the types of questions that are appropriate for navigation sessions or for lifeboat conversations or and and the the what the event is when the event is that kind of thing so just a little a short list of um, of 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 the questions that uh like the ones that you were that you were going through uh and uh and the 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 whole thing around um commitment uh is a really interesting one and I'm, and uh i i think that there is something to support the power of signing something and uh, at the same time, we were just talking about it either today or yesterday about um, we 
we have a tendency of wanting to keep everyone who is interested and um, that maybe part of it is learning to uh, understanding that uh, everyone comes in a con with their own context and that uh, what we're actually trying or what we sh our expectations should be more geared towards um, letting the chaff go and keeping the kernels, the solid kernels, the people who will show up. So there's a there's a percentage of the people that we actually come into contact with who will actually be the stayers, the hanger honors. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's sort of it's a, a, um, a question of balance between yes, how do we encourage people to commit, and how do we also are able to let go of uh, because there's a lot of energy that goes towards trying to retain people and how much energy do we want to spend there and how much energy do we want to spend to nurturing the people who are committing that's a whole just a whole bunch of questions it's not a commentary on anything really uh so uh over to you ben well i think it is a commentary that or at least i take away um because I think there is something about, um, well, partly it's the both and, and Ronnie, I think you put your finger on it. It's, you know, who's ready to show up and we want to make it as easy as possible, but we can't do that. You show up or you don't, and you commit or you don't. And that's not my job. <laughs> if you, if you do, <laughs> then there are ways that we can work together because I'm showing up. I'm here, I'm going to stay here, I'm going to keep showing up. And, um, and there are ways that I can, I can help, I can lend support and need support. And, um, and it's, and you know, I, I guess, you know, a, a lot of this is I'm overcoming, I'm trying to overcome my people pleasing tendencies and the, like trying to be all things to all people. And, a little bit getting to the point where it's like, you know what, stay or don't stay. I don't care. You know, like it's, I, I don't mean that in like, uh, it's nothing personal to me. If you don't want to be here, fine. Don't be here. I don't care. It's okay. There's, you know, um, but if you are going to be here, and I think this comes back to sociocracy and it's non-coercive, we can't make anyone do anything that they don't want to do. And it's really clear if you're going to be here, there are certain agreements. This is how it works. This is how we do things. There are advantages, we think, to being here. If you want those advantages, you sign the agreements and you live by the agreements. And we don't have to go and, you know, and that's, I think, your point, Milan, about where do we spend our time? I don't, I've, I've said for years now, I don't want to convince anyone that there's a crisis. If you don't see that there's a crisis, I can't help you. <laughs> you know, if you can, if you can look at the news regularly, have some sense of of you know the reality of the situation, and you still think everything's fine, I can't address that. I don't know what magic formula th that'll take. If you, however, are concerned about what's going on and realize that you need to do something about it, we all need to do something about it. You're not waiting for somebody else to fix it for you then let's work together and here's how we can work together but you know um yeah i feel i i, I mean i can feel in my body all sorts of energy around this conversation so i think there's there's something really um worthwhile here and as a note your question earlier Rolan, about april this is a question that all of the guilds are being asked to answer and so mm -hmm. april will have a chance to answer this question and um in a tough love sort of way, April's been talking about bringing in her engagement stuff, you know, put up or move on. <laughs> so um, maybe this conversation will, you know, give her the platform to start to add things in or when it comes up in the guild. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, the door is open. And I think this is kind of a principle moving forward. The door is open, but let's not wait for people's future promises. Um, you know, we, we need to move things forward now, whether or not people are, are delivering on things that they say they want to do. Um, anyhow, I, I will get off of my soapbox and I will um, hand it back to Ronnie.
Um, I appreciate what you said because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I I want people who are driven <laughs> to come. I want people who are like asking questions, want to get to work, grappling with their situation, feeling a lot of feelings about things. Um, that's that's the kind of people that I want to work with. So I think, yeah, this is really useful. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else about this. I think it's really awesome conversation. Anything else about um, engagement to share? Over to you, Roland. Still lots to say, but not today. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. Over to Ben. Yeah, what Roland said. More to say, <laughs> but not today. I like that rhyme. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, I want to check in about time. We're an hour and 10 minutes in. Um, we pretty much covered the rest of the seasonal review. Um, the only other piece for the process question was, um, how can we feel like we're making progress? Do we, I would propose that we go around and, and answer this question just so we can wrap up. Um, over to you, Rolan. How can we feel? I'm going to pass. I, I'm not sure how to answer that. I th I think the lean into the process. Um, I think the seasonal review, um, uh, these reminders of, um, I think that this kind of came from about midway through the last season when the guilds were still, you know, we were trying to onboard new folks, bring them up to speed on what each of the guilds was doing. The guilds were all new, so they were also trying to figure out what they were doing. And, and so it felt like we were in the mud and it didn't feel like there was progress. Um, in part, I, I, I think that's just lean, that's part of the process. I think you, you know, there's going to be a, a, a period of wandering in the woods before you feel like you get your way. But having having seasonal reviews, having um, placeholders where we look back and say, OK, what have we been doing? And and really trying to get tasky about when we have a discussion, what are the action items that come from it? I think those are the those are the keys. Um, so over to you, Roni. Yeah, I agree. I feel like we're doing it. I feel like AMAC Reflect is is how we know how do we and and I also I feel like we're making progress um even though we had a lot we spent longer than maybe we thought we would on onboarding and just talking about we talked about a lot of outreach stuff over and over again as we were kind of bringing people in and and that's that's being relational like it just takes time people understand things in different ways at different times and looking back, I'm like, I think that was actually really productive because for, I feel like we did a more in-depth aim, act, reflect about everything we've done for outreach than maybe we, than we have planned to do. Um, so I think it was helpful and useful. Um, and, you know, we, I have work to do on the website. We're doing outreach now for this new offering. Um, we're meeting, we're having regular meetings. So um, things are definitely moving, and I I don't I don't feel concerned. So um, over to you, Roland, if you have anything you want to add now. Yeah, what those people said. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> over to Ben. Yeah, I'm good. And and uh, yeah, and ditto, Ronnie. I think. Well, and that's also trusting the process because I feel like. Um, it, it's all an experiment. And so you never know what the juicy part's going to be. And, you know, and that's kind of, that's the whole secret because we did something, you know, we, we, that took longer than we thought it would. And, you know, that's always how it goes. Right. So I, but I agree. I think we got drawn into the stuff that we needed to get drawn into and I feel like the six conversations and the Connect the Dots Club part of it is brilliance that I don't think would have come out in a if we had gone a different route. 
And, um, you know, so we had this sort of spontaneous development that I think was part of that, you know, the pearl that the grit um, is starting to grow. So, yeah, I feel like it's good. Back to you. Awesome. Oh, cool. Um, all right. Well, we did uh, the rest of the seasonal review. So I'm going to check these off. Don't 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 check that one because it's other guilds also they're, they're all sharing the same task. Oh, oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, but no, this is I think this is great. That's what I was hoping was all the guilds would put things in the same place so we kind okay. of cross pollinate. Okay, great. Yay. Um I feel like we've already done lessons learned and next steps as parts of part of those. Okay. So um, there are three other possible topics and what are people's feelings on discussing any of these topics today in the remaining 14 minutes that we have? Over to you, Rolan. I am able to be present in a supportive role, but not so much in an active one anymore. So over to Ben. Yeah, I, can't, I feel like we we did good work and um, I don't think any of these are burning hot issues. Um, so I feel like, yeah, let's wrap up, call it a day, move on. Over to you. Awesome. Honor. Agreed. So for our checkout question today, I would love to know what are you taking with you from this meeting today? Over to you, Roland. A need for a glass of water and a bit of a nap. Uh, uh, over to Ben. Um, I am feeling really energized, actually. I feel there's something about the conversation that we had around engagement that feels really, um, really productive to me. So that's what I'm taking away. Over to you, Ronnie. I'm really appreciating how things feel so connected. And we're able to have the separate guilds and also talk about and acknowledge the interconnectedness of all of it, which feels very fractally on point with how we want to be operating in the world and what our values are. So I think that's really cool. All right. Well, thank you everyone for being here and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.